so that's the lipology section. Now let's talk about control. And you can't really get to the meat of the issue as far as why we're not being given this information by the powers that be unless we really sink our teeth into the whole control mechanism that's in place on this planet right now. So we're going to examine what's keeping us down and preventing the human race from reaching its full potential. For only by understanding these entities which seek to control us can we ever make an attempt to wrestle loose and escape. After the Occupy movement showed us so eloquently, it is now clear that most of the most important decisions are made by the 1% moneyed elite class. It should be more the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. There was a meme that was going around uh, Facebook about a month ago that said 85 individuals control half the resources on this planet. Do you realize that's about twice as many people in this room control half of the planet's resources? Some of those people are the Rothschild family, which have control over the central banking system in nearly every country of the world. Not quite all of them, but nearly. So some important questions that I raise in Modern Esoteric, and I'll read to you now. What is the NAFTA corridor, proposed international trade routes which give corporations the power to overrule governments? Why is the DOT, Department of Transportation, receiving contracts and funds for removing many off-ramps on the horizontal corridors the primary veins of transportation routes, such as I-70 that runs across this country? What are the Georgia Guidestones? What is the White House Rural Council? What is the Council on Foreign Relations? What is the IMF? Is the Federal Reserve a branch of the government? What is Monsanto, and who are they connected to? What is IG Farben? What is Project Paperclip? What are the chemtrails? What is Thermosol and who is it connected to? What is Codex Elementarius? There are questions you must ask yourself that I just named a few. Then seek answers to. Once you begin to research any of these questions above, you will see every single one of them are somehow intertwined. The answers for any truth seeker never resides within the mouthful of propaganda that's spoon fed to you. The true answers reside in the minutia. The truth resides in the various pockets of hidden agendas, such as what is a soft kill operation and what is the truth behind the BP oil spill? And what is Agenda 21? A movement of vital proportion, ignored by the major media, kept off limits from the general public. Agenda 21 has been on the United Nations drawing board for well over a decade. It actually started in uh, 1991 under the first George Bush presidency, who was a very strong supporter. This movement of Agenda 21 would eventually nullify our constitutional structure with its freedom and prerogatives enshrined in the Bill of Rights, including our unhampered right to religious freedom. It masquerades behind the facade of sustainable development. And you can't really read the finer notes here, but uh, Basically, the plan is to start to acquire private property and create areas that uh, people aren't allowed to go to. You know, on the surface, it sounds like this could be a, a good thing, but really, it takes away quite a few of our rights, especially uh, the right to property. 
I mentioned the Georgia Guidestones. Here's a picture of them. The Georgia Guidestones were erected by an anonymous donor in 1980. There are several languages written on them, but the English translation says that mankind must not exceed 500 million people. And the last few verses describe man as a cancer on this planet. Well, in reality, the true cancer on this planet is the Illuminati, the Cabal, and their affiliated groups, all of whom are Masons. The biggest and most dangerous terrorist group in the world wants to kill 90% of us. They have stated their intentions very clearly, carved in stone, in 12 different languages. So you can't be more clear than that. I like this one because it's popular culture. We all know Dr. Evil, and it sheds light on geoengineering, or more commonly known as chemtrailing, with no oversight and no one to go to. Something big is going on here. There is a chapter called the pineal gland in the control section of modern esoteric, mainly because the effects of fluoride on the brain is to calcify and shut down this gland, which is very much wired like our eyeballs right here in the center hemisphere of our brain. And for many, many centuries, masters and seekers have called it the third eye, and for very good reason. In most of us, it's inoperative. If it were to be operative, we would start to have psychic powers beyond our imaginations, as well as certain superhuman abilities, many of which I defined in some of the chapters of the esoteric series. So the effect of fluoride on the brain is to calcify and shut down this gland because this gland is largely associated with giving us the ability to be psychic. Now, if we were all starting to become psychic, this whole illusion that they've set up for us to think this is reality would start crashing down. And this is why fluoride is one of the soft kill subjects that we need to be aware of. Rockefeller created the AMA, the American Medical Association. Uh, the Rockefellers patent the diseases, and the doctor is required to use the AMA prescribed, quote, treatment, or else that doctor will lose their license. Rockefeller also got Nikola Tesla written out of the history books stole his work, and eventually had him killed. The drugs are also petroleum-based, and petroleum is a known carcinogenic. Now, if nature can provide a way to alleviate any illness that we can come across, why would we want to take a petroleum-based pill instead? Again we have been greatly misdirected to think that this is the course to wellness. The US has the most dangerous and yet the most expensive medical system in the world. Unpaid medical bills cause upward of 62% of all bankruptcies in the USA. Dr. Robert Atkins, medical doctor, creator of the Atkins diet has said, there is not one, but many cures for cancer available, and they're all being systematically suppressed by the ACS, the NCI, and the major oncology centers. They have too much of an interest in the status quo. Among those natural cancer cures is vitamin B17, or latrail therapy. Bitter almonds, not regular almonds, are popular as an alternative cancer medicine due to its high vitamin B17 content. Hemp oil, 
has also shown promising results. Yet health food stores stopped selling B17 in the form of apricot seeds in 2002, sometimes because of armed FDA raids, let alone hemp oil. So, uh, if, so cancer patients could take only one cheap and non-toxic pill per day for their treatment because these B17 almond extract capsules were being targeted by the FDA. It did not bode well for the pharmaceutical industry. They stood to lose hundreds of billions of dollars annually. So what does the FDA do? They openly banned apricot seeds and the vitamin B17 extract because each was successfully curing cancers as an unapproved drug. The British government followed suit in the same year and banned both. People in both countries were arrested and charged for merely selling organic apricot seeds, a carrier of B17 latrail. So moving along in the control section, in the revelation of St. John, the last book of the New Testament, the revelation which John receives is that of the ultimate victory of good over evil and the end of the present age. Many people have used the word apocalypse very loosely to refer to any end time scenario or to the end of the world in general. Very few people know that the original Greek translation of apocalypse can also mean a revelation of something hidden or of lifting the veil. Sacred geometry involves universal patterns used in the design of everything in our reality, most often seen in architecture and sacred art. The basic belief is that geometry and mathematical ratios, harmonics, and proportions are also found in music, light, cosmology, and this value system is seen as widespread even in prehistory, a cultural universal of the human condition. It is considered foundational to building sacred structures such as temples, mosques, megaliths, monuments, and churches. Sacred spaces such as altars and tabernacles, meeting places such as sacred groves, village greens, and holy wells are the creation of religious art, iconography, and using divine proportions. Alternatively, sacred geometry-based arts may be uh, ephemeral, such as visualization, sand painting, and medicine wheels. Sacred geometry may be understood as a worldview of pattern recognition, a complex system of religious symbols and structures involving space, time, and form. According to this view, the basic patterns of existence are perceived as sacred. By connecting with these, a believer contemplates the great mysteries and the great design. By studying the nature of these patterns, forms, and relationships and their connections, insight may be gained into the mysteries, the laws and lore of the universe. As we can see, the creation of human life also passes through sacred geometry. The single cell divides into two forming Vesca Pisces in the middle, continues and forms the egg of life, or star tetrahedron. And at the bottom, you have the flower of life, which in modern esoteric I show is a pattern that can be seen around the world. Sometimes the oldest temples of the world feature this pattern, because look what that pattern represents, life itself. That's why I included sacred geometry and sacred symbols in the control section, 
because this was information that was not meant for the average person. This is the true expression of the creation of life. Monsanto is set to receive a huge government bailout from the European Union. This is just in the news recently. After unloading tens of millions of dollars to defeat the historic California Proposition 37, which we had on our ballot a little over a year ago, to label genetically modified organisms, or GMOs as we know them as, the biotechnology abomination called Monsanto is now set to receive a multi-million dollar bailout from the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. A London-based financial group connected to the World Bank while proponents of labeling food products with GMOs were vastly outspent by Big Agro and the measure Prop 37, as we know, lost, the upside is a lot more awareness surrounds the issue with the average voter, not just in California, but nationwide. I would not be a bit surprised to see GMO labeling go on other states' ballots in the next few election cycles. So this is a good example about how people are waking up. Only five years ago, hardly any of us even heard of GMOs. Now we realize that we are being exploited in one large experiment in our food. And nobody had a say in the matter. They won't even let us know it, it's on the label. But here's the kicker, and this is what's so great. After years of predicting it would happen, and after years of having their suggestions largely ignored by companies, farmers and regulators, scientists have documented the rapid evolution of corn rootworms that are resistant to BT corn. <laughs> kind of makes you think there might be something to this say no to GMO stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> At the very least, sellers should have their products certified by independent labs, and fully disclose the origin of their product. The food you consume is kind of important, don't you think? 